Well, before he was president, Donald Trump was a frequent guest on Howard Stern's radio show. What few people knew until recently is that Trump tried to get Stern to endorse him and speak on stage at the Republican convention. In his fascinating new book, Stern shows the evolution of Donald Trump from brash real estate developer to presidential candidate through his many interviews with Trump. I spoke earlier today with Howard Stern. Now, the full interview is going to air tomorrow night at 10 p.m. for the hour right here on CNN. But I want to share you, with you now some of what Stern said about his relationship with Trump and why he believes the president would benefit from something Stern says has changed his own life, psychotherapy. You talk about trauma, and you've talked about it in relationship to President Trump. Yeah. That Donald Trump is a person who experienced a lot of trauma early on. Yeah, from what I know of Donald uh, and his relationship with his father, it sounds tremendous. It sounds like the father was very domineering. The father expected a lot of him. And the father, I don't know, there was military school. You know, you, you read these drips and drabs and you go, wow, I can assure you he's been traumatized. Because, you know, Donald, you know, his level of narcissism is so strong. He has trouble with empathy. We know that. And um, I wish he'd go into psychotherapy. I'd be so proud of him if he did. He, he, and he, he would probably, flourish. He, but he never has. I mean, he never would. There's no way. I, I, I do not believe he's ever done psychotherapy. Because, he, because he's demonstrating a lot of the, um, a lot of the behaviors that I, I recognize. And I think as an interview, I've noticed this just when I used to interview him. I, I, haven't, I don't get to interview him anymore because uh, he doesn't do it. But he, he was very susceptible to flattery. And if you gave, and I noticed this in your interviews with him, you would throw out something like, your poll numbers, you know, I've never seen anything like this. And well, it's a definite technique. It washes over him. Yes, it's a technique. You know, um, it's like if you meet someone who has a bad self, oh, you're, you're very beautiful. You're so handsome. You're this, you're that. With Donald, it always starts out, notice I call him in every interview, Mr. Trump. Now, this is before he was president, Mr. Trump. That's intentional. Oh, absolutely. Someone had asked me, he said, why do you call him Mr. Trump? I said, because it loosens him up. He feels respected. He feels good about himself. Now he's going to roll. He's going to open up to me. When you see him now in the White House as president, what do you see? Well, you know, I given, go into given great how you, deal. your history with him and how you know him. Well, well, first of all, it's unbelievable to me, and I and I've documented my my thoughts about how this whole candidacy even came about. This was a publicity stunt. Um, I, I I happen to have, you have no doubt about that. I have no doubt because I have some inside information. And the thing is that it started out with the art of the deal, the book, and uh, it was a you know a PR guy's idea. He said, uh, Donald, what you need to do is. We'll, we'll, we'll make a, a, a sort of a rumor that you're running for president. And uh, Donald's like, oh. So all of a sudden he was being interviewed. The book goes right to number one. When he had a second book came out, that's when he decided to start the rumor that he was going to run for president. And then this time around, uh, in the last election, the apprentice ratings were, were not what they were. Uh, NBC was not going to give him a raise. And what's a better way than to, to get NBC's interest? I'll run for president, and I'll get lots of press, and I think that's what happened. Do you think he likes being president? I don't think he likes being president at all. I think he liked winning the presidency. He, he likes to win. And, and again, I'm not Donald Trump's psychiatrist, and I had many good laughs with Donald. And in some ways, I feel it has been uh, wrong the way they use my transcripts uh, in a way to frame him. And I'll give you an example. When he said the line about uh, STDs being his Vietnam. That was a very jokey thing on my show. If you went back and listened to the tape, you would not take that seriously. He was in the spirit of the program. And then he was, you know, they tried to use that against him. Hey, he's being, how dare he compare himself to a veteran of the Vietnam War who served when he didn't serve. All right, let everybody take a deep breath and relax. But having said that, the stuff I put in the book, I think is very revealing about our now president. And uh, there's something to be learned there. Do you think he's the same person that you interviewed now? Yeah, I do. I, I think he's the same exact person. I think the only way you really change is to do analysis. So, yeah, I think he's the same guy. He, he asked you to speak at the RNC. I think that, yeah. I had no idea about he that. He used to call me from the campaign trail. And I think he was really desirous of my endorsement because, A, I have a big audience. And B, he's familiar with that audience. And I think it would have been very comforting for him if I had gotten on board. 
So when the uh, when he secured the nomination and now he was thinking about the convention, I think he wanted some showbiz there. He picked up the phone and he called me personally and he asked me if I would go to the uh, Republican convention and endorse him. And I was like, oh gosh, you know, for about a split second I went, can you imagine if I was all in? I, I would be the head of the FCC. I could be the Supreme Court. I could be on the Supreme Court. I think Donald would give me anything I'd you, you really believe that? Oh, I believe it for 100% that I, if Ben Carson could get in there and, and, uh, I think Donald would have appointed me. Because he's uh, transactional or he... he it, it, I think he would have been grateful, grateful. that I'm, I'm on his team, regardless of whether I know what I'm doing or not. Do you think he wants to get reelected? Do you think he... I, mean, do you, do I don't you, think... I, I think psychologically, if he really got under the hood, I think he'd say, what am I doing? I'm in my 70s. Uh, we're going to have more from Howard Stern in a moment. We're now from my one-on-one -on -one interview with Howard Stern and his new book titled Howard Stern Comes Again. In it, he uh, talks more on the RNC speech that might have been, but also about how he tried to get Hillary Clinton on his show back during the campaign. Stern is a supporter of hers and wanted, in his words, to humanize her. While Stern doesn't do a lot of political interviews, there are two candidates who interest him above all the others in the Democratic field right now. If you could interview him now, because he, you, you haven't spoken to him since you turned down the RNC. No, well, when I turned down the RNC, it was the last time he spoke, and he said to me, you know, what are you doing? And, and you know, and I explained to him I, in the nicest way that it would be difficult for me. I, I said, um, I'm, I'm not really actually comfortable being a public speaker, which I'm not. I don't like going up. I never was a stand-up comic. I don't like getting up in front of audiences. This radio studio suits me just fine. I'm alone with Robin, and she's my audience. I'm in heaven. It's great. Uh, so when, uh, you know, it struck me as even odd. I know he was a Hillary Clinton fan. He was a supporter of hers. So the whole thing was weird. And I am, I, I, I have been a Hillary Clinton supporter way back before even when Obama, when she was, you know, right, trying to get the, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I think she's a terrific public servant. I thought her husband was the best president we ever had. Tried to get her repeatedly to come on your show. I did everything that I normally don't do, I including including going to the New York Times and the Washington Post and doing an interview with them, <clears throat> excuse me, and supplying them with my whole game plan with Hillary. And the whole game plan was I wanted to humanize her to my audience. You weren't interested in talking about politics or policies. No. You were interested in her childhood. Her childhood, what drives her. I wanted to humanize her in the same way. There's a couple of people in my book um, where I interviewed them, and the audience's perception changed just from one interview. It's interesting that Hillary Clinton, I mean, she must have given your campaign to, to get her on, and you giving away your strategy. Uh, she must have known that was the idea. It's interesting that she did not see that as a benefit. And, I don't and have it the says answer. something about her as a candidate. It does, and, and I say this, uh, and, I, and I'm glad we're talking about it, because whoever becomes the Democratic nominee, or even if you're fighting for the nomination. I applaud those people who go over to Fox News, like Mayor Pete, who said, you know what, I'll go, I want to I wanna win this thing. And he got a standing ovation over at Fox News. Impressive. And that was my point to Hillary. Who in the Democratic field do you, would you want to interview now? I don't know. You know, I don't do a lot of political interviews. I'm kind of fatigued from it. Uh, I'm talking about from my radio show. I assume even if you were doing Democratic candidates now, it would be more about their background, where they're coming. I mean, just as you yes, want to do with Hillary I would, Clinton. I would do you often, find any of them, the current crop, A, do you find any of them kind of interesting in their life story, and B, do you think any of them can actually beat Donald Trump? Yeah, again, I think the best interviews are the ones where I am so engaged. I am curious about Mayor Pete because, um, number one, uh, an openly gay candidate, to me, uh, I, I, I salute him. It's not going to be easy. There's still so much of our country that is homophobic. And, uh, you know, we could sit here in New York and say, hey, right on. But, you know, he's going to catch a lot of hell. And I, I admire his service to the country. I also find him, when he speaks, incredibly intelligent and knows how to talk. So you'd like to interview him? I'd be curious about his life. Right. I really would be, and, and the adversity. Uh, but, you know, Biden would be just as sort of interesting to me, in a way.